They're you know, very resourceful. <laughs> I'm sure you are. You will find it. Um, you still have your music career, of course, right? We're talking about your film work, but how like, are you going to balance Last that? time I checked, like, I, I, yeah, I love that. <laughs> I do have my music career. And are you, I mean, is, like, how much of the visual side of it, whether it's more films, music videos, that kind of thing, how much do you think that will take up of your time and creativity? Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting projection to try to come up with having not thought about that exact thing ever before. Um, I, I really, uh, I have a lot of bandwidth to put into creative things. And um, I never, I get exhausted by things in life, but they're never creative things. Um, I, I love making stuff. And I'm like, for the last like five or six years, I've just been like, I just love making stuff. I just wanna never do anything but make stuff. So I just hope that that keeps going. I am so lucky to be supported by kind, generous, nice, thoughtful people who seem to care about stuff I make. It's, I just hope that that keeps going. I'm gonna keep working hard, trying my best, all of that. And I, yeah, yeah, I, I would absolutely love to expand in terms of filmmaking and storytelling and, and keep, you know, it's a natural extension of my writing. I really feel that and as long as I can keep doing all the natural extensions of my writing, you know, mm -hmm. you know, doing shows is a natural extension of my writing. I love that too. Yeah. I want to do, do all the things. Well, Taylor, we're out of time, but I just want to thank you so much for this uh, conversation. I could, oh, I'm hearing that we have a little bit more time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll keep it going for just a little Yeah, I would love it. I, I, oh my god. Oh, oh, it's okay. It's just flowers. Whoa. It was fast though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's Richard. Kind of um, I wanted to ask you, you, you talked about um, Sadie and Dylan as the actors that you absolutely wanted for All Too Well in short film. And in future film projects or just ideas that might be percolating, I wonder if there's certain actors that you have in mind. Totally. I definitely do. But if I, if I say, you know, if I say that, then if I go to them and say, they'll already know. Do you know what I mean? And then I won't have an opportunity to write them like a, a novel length <laughs> text, which honestly, there's just something in that, you know? Me just begging people to work with me over text message or voice memo or whatever it is that I did. Um, no, I, I absolutely, I, I, there are so many actors out there that when I watch a film, I think that sparks, that sparks a character that, you know, or they seem like actors that you could trust with, um, with filling them in on the scene, writing it, but also saying, okay, now do a take where you, I want to see what you would do if you had, if you could forget parts of the script and just do this as the character. That's what I had with Dylan and Sadie. Yeah. It was really, you know, we safeguarded it so that there, there was a script, but I'm going to be honest with you, when you compliment the writing in that scene, a lot of that is them. So, cause they're just brilliant and they're so natural um, and their chemistry was so electric that um, I, I couldn't, I, I could not possibly take credit for all the things that they said and the ways that they said them. It was mm -hmm. just like phenomenal to watch it happen. Mm -hmm. So those moments are the things that as a storyteller, you're just sitting there thinking, it is, it is the most brilliant thing when that many people can come together to collaborate. Because when I'm making music, it's usually, you know, either me writing on my own or I'm in a studio with one other person. And it's a very, that's, that's, that's two people. And, th and that feels collaborative and fun. But when you are on a, on a film set, mm -hmm. sometimes you just catch yourself looking over at the camera operator or the first AD or, or someone hanging a light in the perfect exact spot. And you're just thinking, I cannot believe how talented and so specialized and brilliant these people are, and we're all working together to make to make this. And when you have it culminate in a scene, like what Sadie and Dylan did over and over again during this short film, it just feels very, it feels like a big group hug. I can't watch it without, when Sadie 
Um, I know it's become a meme, but it. <laughs> but when I watch um, Sadie see him call her, and she's laying in bed, and she's and she's crying so hard that she actually physically grabs her chest. It's it just really messes me up. Like it actually physically hurts me when I see that. Because because yeah, it does. Because she's so talented, and and she really makes me believe that she's going through that. And I their their chemistry in this was so good that I actually by the end of watching it, I just wish that they. I wish he would. I wish he would kind of maybe like go in the bookstore. <laughs> but but it is. I did I did want to end it in terms of, you know, I think it's really. Um, just devastating when a character goes from being in in another character's life to then being a voyeur, watching from the outside in. Like you were you were a main character, yes. and now now you're standing outside a window. Yes. There's that barrier is just so brutal. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> we come back to brutal one way or the other. Yeah, um, there's something in in what you said in terms of uh, the scene where where Sadie's clutching her chest. Which sounds like that wasn't direction. That was something that she came to, or was it a combination? How did you? Come that was to something that? we. That one we were going for. Oh, you we, were. Okay. Well, I didn't say clutch your chest, um, <laughs> but but there there were these moments where we knew we were um, we were filming a certain phase of her grieving, mm -hmm. and we knew some of it was you know, different phases of her letting go of this person, and this was one of the ones that. Sadie and I knew from the jump that this one was going to be, you know, the kind of crying that, like, racks your body. Like, just the kind of crying where you can't breathe. And she got herself there in a way that was so um, unbelievably impressive. Um, and, I mean, her her face was completely red in her body. And it was, it was in her body, that crying. And, and I just... When I saw her preparing, you know, you you want to ask an actor what way in which they want to prepare for that, and like, she got herself there um, to a place that I think really, really makes people when they watch it, they know that she's she's emotionally, physically, mentally hurt. Every, there's there's every aspect of pain mm -hmm. coursing through this person. And for her to, to give us that performance is gen genuinely just such a generous thing to do as, as a performer. Absolutely. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, some directors do direct in a very detailed physical way. You know, move your elbow here, an inch more this way, that kind of way. And Actors might not like that, but some directors want that kind of precision, and other directors do, I think, more like what you're describing. And I wonder how you find that balance in terms of, you have this vision in your head, you know what you're going for in terms of the effect, mm -hmm. but how how much do you direct the detail of your actor's performances? Uh, with this one, it was really about um, naturalism. Okay. So we're not trying to get a, a perfectly symmetrical shot, and if you are two inches to this way, you mess up the shot because the shot's all about symmetry of the desk and the lantern and the lantern. You know, it's not... It's not Wes Anderson. Oh, I love Wes Anderson. I love Wes Anderson. <laughs> this is but what I, that's exactly what I'm referencing because I love Wes Anderson. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there is a... Di when I watch a Chloe Zhao film, that is that is her with a steady cam finding the emotion in the shot, and I find that just as riveting mm -hmm. as when I'm watching a Wes Anderson film. And, um, and, I, and I love both types of film. But with this, we were really going for more of that, just the, the heart throbbing naturalism because um, their physicality and them being natural within those moments, you know, I'd be in the car with them and when I'm in the back seat of that, of that like 90s Mercedes that we had, like me and Rena are in the back seat of the car and there is a moment where we're like, okay, you know, Dylan put her hair behind her ear, Sadie look over at him and grin, tell a joke. You know, they were, they're kind of just talking to each other off the cuff, but you would, you would reach in verbally and just give them a bit of a prompt. Um, and that happens definitely more in the times where they're, you know, they're falling in love and there's this chemistry. Um, it, it was a really great combination of feeling like oh my God, they've got this. Like there were moments where you're like, just let them go. Do not mess with that. Don't mess with, with what they're doing. And then there'd be moments where you're like, okay, you know, I can't see. There's a big, massive tear about to roll down her 
face, but there's one piece of hair blocking it. So you're just like, you move your hair, and it just, you know. <laughs> like, but you also don't want to mess with that too much. I don't know. I mean, it's really just a case-by-case -case situation. <laughs> As it is probably for most directors. Uh, yeah. One other piece in terms of uh, performance, uh, which many people don't see when they're watching films, but it's editing. Yes. You can create a performance in the edit suite. Yes. Sometimes, and in terms of the time you take for yes. each scene. Our, our editor, Ted Gard, is absolutely incredible. And Saul and I would sit in, in the edit suite every single day, going through every single thing we had shot, and um, and the edit, I think, you know, it being um, part of it being set to music helped because I knew exactly uh, there were some shots that were really locked in, right? Like there's a scene where we have, you know, a tracking shot and the doll is moving in, and it's her, um, it's it's um, him, no, it's it's moving out, yeah, it's moving out, and it's revealing um, Dylan meeting her. Her dad and it's this beautiful scene full of warmth and he's he's doing it he's charming the dad it's, mm -hmm. it's great and then you're and then you're um, pushing back in and it's a completely different day I wanted to match that exactly so there were some structured things mm -hmm. but then there were also moments where it's free-flowing and I wanted to have the sort of collage kaleidoscope of, of memories at the end mm -hmm. I wanted that to be the kind of thing that we'd find in the edit and okay. so we did that. But I mean, there were just, we were like, you know, drinking wine and crying a lot. <laughs> just, you know, very serious stuff. <laughs> That's where the art comes from, right? Yeah, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um, we are actually now truly out of time. Yeah. I'm sorry, we can't have a more question, not even from me. But I just want to ask you to join me in thanking this remarkable. <laughs>